folks, John here with Through My Lens, and today I'm coming to you with a knife collection update video. Now, it's been a minute since I've done one of these. Gosh, probably two or three years ago, I did a zero tolerance knife collection video, and at that time, that pretty much was the entirety of my collection. Um, I was really stuck on zero tolerance and pretty much only had zero tolerance knives. Since then, uh, some knives have left my collection and uh, some knives have come back in. Uh, and uh, what you see now really is the focal point. There's there's more variety in it than just zero tolerance. Uh, and I thought, gosh, uh, you know, we're all in this uh, COVID-19 situation here with no place to go, nothing to do. Might as well do a, a knife collection update video and, and talk about uh, some of these knives. There are videos on each and every one of these knives um, on my channel here on YouTube. So if you see something that you want to get some more details on why, just scroll through the video list on my channel and you'll see that there is a video review on it. Now, uh, truth in advertising, the, the 10 knives that you see on here really aren't the entirety of my knife collection. There are a few others that I would say are less significant. For example, you know, I do have several of these uh, little Swiss Army knives like this one that uh, are, I, I do carry with me quite often, um, but you know, the, they're really not the focal point of my knife collection. And I really don't consider myself a knife collector. Um, I do have a number of different knives, but the, what you see here on the table, all are, almost all are uh, uh, what I would consider to be more tactical knives, knives that can be used, yes, for a variety of EDC purposes, but can flex into a defensive purpose if needed. Uh, as a concealed carry permit holder, I think uh, having uh, a pocket knife that can be used defensively is uh, pretty critical. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we'll start here on the bottom right. Again, the bottom here is pretty much all of my zero tolerance knives that I still have. And these two knives here are both uh, ZT0562 carbon fiber models. This one is uh, pretty much stock as, as it came out of the box, and it is significant in that it's one of the originals that uh, uh, does have, uh, you can see, uh, this was from the, one of the first runs that is made from M390 blade steel. These are pretty rare these days. Um, and it's also significant that you can see that the serial number is 0390 which I think is just neat uh, because it is an M390 model. Now the one next to it on the table is also a 0562 that I have modified a little bit uh, to uh, you know, differentiate it from the other one. You can see that it has a uh, carbon fiber lightning strike blue uh, scale on it that is just absolutely gorgeous. I've never seen another one like it. Um, I think this was done by Sharp Dress Knives. Uh, don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. I bought this from a guy uh, on one of the forums, and I, if my memory serves, I've had it for several years. Uh, I think that's uh, that's where he got it. Uh, you'll see that also that while the stock 0562 has black uh, screws in the handle scales, you'll see this one uh, has uh, uh, silver uh, handle screws that match the pivot. Uh, I just took the handle screws and buffed them out with a Dremel, and then I went to ZT and ordered a replacement set of blackened screws in case in case I wanted to take it back to uh, uh, the stock look. Uh, but I think that looks much better with uh, with those those hardware. But like the other one that we just saw, this one is also an M390 uh, 0562 CF. Uh, with a pretty low serial number, um, yeah, 0070, number 70. Pretty neat. Um, this is more, the 10 knives that are here is probably more knives than I really want to keep. Uh, seven or eight knives is probably good for me in terms of feeling like I'm getting my money's worth and being able to use them, uh, carry them, each of them, you know, at least once a week. Um, so uh, I'm considering uh, selling one of these two uh, 0562 CFs since it kind of does seem silly to have two of them uh, these days, but we'll see. 
Uh, next up, I've got a couple of 0095s. Now, I think this model is one of Zero Tolerance's most underrated knives uh, that they have ever put out. The, the 0095 is still in uh, their catalog, the Blackwash model, and it is my least uh, uh, least favorite uh, of them, although I have considered getting one before. Um, I actually have three of these. Uh, what you're not seeing on the table is I've got a user version of the 0095 uh, S90BLK that you see here. Uh, this one is a really special model. This one uh, is a Russian market only uh, knife and and uh, Gosh, I just really like this with the with the blue. I think that's a uh, blue aluminum backspacer, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think that's an anodized blue. Um, S35VN blade steel that's just gorgeous. Really like that. Um, and again, the only way to get these was to order them from a dealer in Russia, which is what I did. Um, really, really nice example uh, of this knife. And, you know, if I had to, th this is one of those knives, and I, I think the same could be said just for just about any knife on, this t on the table here, but if I had to get rid of all my knives, I could, pro I could probably live just fine with one of these 0095s. It's thin, it's relatively light for what it is, um, and I uh, love the blade shape. Um, it's, just, it's just really fantastic really like the, the, the ZT0095 line a lot. Uh, really wish this one was a regular catalog item. I think they would sell an absolute ton of them um, if they brought this back and, and had it as a regular offering in the collection. That is one of the only things that I don't like about Zero Tolerance these days is while these uh, these two knives I consider to be evergreen models that they have been continuously in the ZT catalog since uh, they came in and, and were, were first offered for sale, uh, you can easily send one of these back, get it serviced, get the blade uh, replaced. Um, that You can't do that with these limited edition models. Um, I, I can't get a replacement blade for this uh, or this one, for example. Um, I can't buy another one, uh, primary, you know, directly from ZT or one of their their dealers. You know, if I lost one of these, I just am not a fan of those limited edition models. Uh, so I'm reluctant to use them. I like them; uh, they are part of my, you know, collection. But they, I don't cut with them. I do carry them uh, because I like them, but uh, uh, the blades are unused. Um, finally, we've got uh, another hinderer designed uh, zero tolerance. Uh, that's true of three of these five uh, knives here. Um, this is the, I think this is the 0393, is that right? Yeah, 0393. Um, you know, I've carried this one a lot. Uh, haven't cut with it, but uh, again, another great uh, defensive knife, great everyday carry. Again, it's one of the lighter knives that I have from Zero Tolerance. Come on, focus camera. Why aren't you focusing? There we go. One of the uh, lighter, uh, more tactically oriented knives from Zero Tolerance. It's not that it's not the prettiest knife that they ever made. It's not the ugliest knife, but uh, um, I kind of go back and forth as to whether or not I like this knife. Um, I I like it. I'll say primarily for its function. Uh, the flipping action is phenomenal. Uh, one of the, the best flippers uh, that I own, uh, and I just love, again, it's got a blade shape very similar to the 0095, um, more of a compound uh, harpoon in this case. Um, but it's one that I've carried uh, quite a bit. Um, with some of the other additions in my, my knife collection, this is one that I may let go. Um, but I have had it for quite a while since uh, uh, since it hit the market, and I think it's yeah it's easily the 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 newest ZT in my collection. The what they've been producing for the past couple three years uh, just really isn't speaking to me uh, from from you know my personal taste. That doesn't mean they've stopped making good knives. It's just they're not speaking to me personally. Moving to the top row. Um, this is my first and only Hogue 
made knife. Uh, this is uh, uh, the Doug Ritter designed. Um, gosh, what is this? The MK SKA, I think or Mark II, something like that. I've got a video on this knife. I'll, I'll show in the, uh, uh, I'll throw up the exact name of this model because uh, it just doesn't roll off the tongue. But it's made by Hogue and designed by Doug Ritter. And um, again, this is just an absolute phenomenal knife. I, I don't carry this one as much as I should, but I really like it. It um, uh, It's a the action on this is better than than most Benchmades uh, that I've ever tried. It is just so smooth, great ergonomics, um, perfect size, not particularly heavy, uh, just a great all-around user carrying knife. I, I kind of wish that this had better third-party support. I wouldn't mind seeing some third-party uh, scales out there for this one. Um, would, that would be interesting to me. Uh, maybe some uh, some third-party standoffs just to give it a little bit more appeal. It's just a little bland as it is, but you know, great blade steel, great ergonomics, uh, phenomenal knife. This is a better, uh, if you will, griptilian uh, than the Benchmade griptilian for sure. And speaking of Benchmade. Uh, you will see the only Benchmade that's on this table. I do have another one. I do have a Benchmade Griptilian, but it stays in my uh, uh, my laptop bag in case I forget a pocket knife with me. Once in a blue moon, I will forget to grab a knife. So uh, that way I at least always have a knife with me. Uh, but it doesn't see a lot of use for sure. But I am really shocked at just how much I like this new Benchmade Super Freak. Um, really, really nice knife. Been extremely happy with it. Um, just love, this is probably the only knife, almost the only knife in my collection that really has any red elements to it. Most of them have bluer elements. Um, uh, here's another knife that I wish had a little bit more uh, third-party support out there. I, the, uh, the handle scales, there's nothing wrong with them per se, but I wouldn't mind. Uh, putting something else on there, like maybe carbon fiber or something that you know would just uh, snaz this up a little bit. But in my mind, this is the nicest uh, knife that's in the Benchmade catalog right now. Um, it's been wearing in beautifully. Uh, it flips a lot, lot better than it did when I did the video uh, because I've been carrying it and, and flipping it a lot and just really, really like, I think this is such an attractive knife. Uh, great ergonomics, a little larger blade even than some of the others, so that's great. Um, this thumb ramp here into, into the jimping is so nice. Gosh, the, for the, you know, for less than $200, you can pick these up and, and man, this is just such a great knife. I did put a deep carry pocket clip, one of the Benchmade deep carry pocket clips on it. Um, and, cause I just didn't like the looks of the other one, but really, really great. I'm, I just, I've been really surprised at how much I've been liking and carrying this knife. Um, uh, just a great, great knife. Moving on, we've got uh, recently reviewed, recently acquired this uh, Chris Reeves Sabenza. This is one of the uh, Blade HQ exclusive variants of the Sabenza. It is a Sabenza 21. Um, and I, when I decided that I want one of these, I think ultimately I would like to get a 31. I think it would look better without the uh, the hole here, which is probably the biggest difference between the 21 and the 31. Um, but it's probably going to be some time before uh, Chris Reeve makes another version of uh, another one like this in the 31. Sorry if you're hearing a little noise. That's uh, my dog just rustling around in her, her kennel. Uh, my studio is shared with my dogs, and, and sometimes they make a little noise that gets on camera. But anyway... You, uh, the only way you're going to get this version of the polished scale 
with the black carbon fiber inlays is to, to get one of these from Blade HQ, although I think they're sold out and I don't know that they're going to get any more. Uh, so that they're only uh, available on the secondary market now, which is where I got mine, but uh, I, I didn't have to pay uh, anything more than what this original retailed for. A little bit pricey, but uh, I'm just really happy to have uh, a version of the Sabenza back in my collection that I really like and want to carry and use. Darn it. I can flip this out, I promise. There we go. So, really, really like this version of the Sabenza. Okay, here's another recent, uh, recent acquisition here. Of course, the Hinderer XM18 Gen 6 in the spear point blade. Um, the Spanto is probably my least favorite. This is probably my second least favorite. I wouldn't mind getting uh, a harpoon uh, blade version. That seems to be one of my more favorite. I also seem to like the sheep foot uh, in the slicer grind. So um, uh, I'm not sure if this one will be staying in my collection uh, permanently. Uh, if I saw one with a sheep's foot or a harpoon blade, uh, I might sell this one and pick up that one. But um, I'm okay with it for the time being. I just would like, uh, what I primarily like about those other versions is uh, a knife with a little bit more belly on it. Uh, but again, this is perfectly fine. Uh, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with it. I have kind of uh, configured this one to my preferences with the anodized blue standoff. Um, I did order a anodized blue lock bar stabilizer that hasn't come yet, but uh, I will install that soon. Uh, I do have a couple other scales. This one is my favorite of the ones that I have, this blue-black scale. really like that. Um, I bought it with a red one, um, and I do have uh, one or two others that I'm, that I'm going to play with as well. Part of the fun of having an XM18 is playing Barbie with it. But uh, this one's been stealing a lot of pocket tame lately just because uh, it checks so many boxes for me in terms of what I look for uh, in an everyday carry. And finally, we have my Daryl Ralph uh, Dominator Ventilator. Uh, what a fantastic knife. Probably my favorite uh, tactical folder in my collection, simply because it is so thin. Um, um, and uh, this was one that I bought from rangestore.net. And it, uh, it just, it's, it's when I got associated with uh, steel target paint, uh, the shooting team. I am a competition shooter and I do shoot competitively in steel challenge in USPSA and I'm part of uh, team steel Car target paint and um, got this from rangestore.net that they kind of introduced me to Daryl Ralph and I've been so impressed with, uh, with uh, Daryl Ralph's work. Daryl Ralph recently moved to Ohio so Again, once the COVID-19 stuff is, is done and over with, I do plan on visiting him and doing a, a shop tour. He's kind of redoing his shop with his you know new digs here in Ohio, so I do plan on visiting that. But this, uh, this particular knife has an S35 uh, VN blade steel, which is fantastic. Um, just the, the blade shape is pretty unconventional for me. Uh, kind of a uh, harpoon tanto, um, but I like it. I, I do like it a lot. It's it's very different for me. It's it's one that uh, um, unusual, I will say, for for uh, for my uh, for my taste. But but I do like it. I do like the the coating, the black coating, and of course it has the blue anodization on the the back. Gosh, I I carried this almost every day. Uh, when I first got it for probably six, seven, eight months. I mean, it completely dominated my, my pocket for, for that amount of time. I've, I brought it with me to, uh, to matches. Um, just love this knife. It is so, so lightweight. The dominator ventilator with the, the carbon fiber scale here and the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the venting here on, on the scale. This, this knife is so lightweight and just, it's, I, it, it just, again, 
checks so many boxes for me. I love this knife. The flipping action is the best of any knife in my collection. This is an expensive knife, um, but it's worth worth every penny because it um, it has the vault like feeling uh, of of the uh, uh, the Sabenza here, um, but uh, it has the flipping action. Uh, that's better than a ZT or, or uh, the Gen 6 Hinder for sure. Just effortless. It's wonderful. So there you have it. There is uh, my uh, 2020 knife collection update. Uh, I'm really pretty happy with where things are. A couple of things I might shave down a little bit to get it down to, you know, about eight knives, but. I'm very, very happy with where it is, and uh, I don't anticipate, anticipate picking up any new knives anytime soon uh, unless uh, I, I run across another Hinder or XM18 that has uh, the blade shape that I'm looking for. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care. God bless. We will see you in the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this production from the Through My Lens YouTube channel. If you did, please click on the like button and do share the video on social media. If you'd like to see more content like it, please do subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and do check out Through My Lens at www.throughmylens.org.